Hey everyone. Last week we took a look at how to send text messages from the Raspberry Pi. This week we're going to be talking about how to read a serial port and manipulate that data. So I've got the Pi hooked up. We've got a putty window open and I've got VNC that we'll be using later. But the Pi is hooked up with the Arduino Uno connected as well as the LTE modem. If we run the ls usb command here, we can see that the Arduino is connected and we can see that the modem is connected, so that's all good. And then if we run the list TTYs here, we can see our modem from last week right here on TTY USB 0. But we can also see this one right here, the uh, TTY ACM 0. That's the one we're going to be interested in today. That is the Adreno Uno. So what we'll do is we can follow the activity on that serial port using the same screen application that we used last week. So if we just type that in here, hit enter, we will see the activity from the uh, GPS. Now what we're interested in is this first line right up here. That's an NMEA sentence. What we're going to do is read that line and then copy the GPS coordinates out of it. Now the tracking system goes into a low power sleep mode so it's not practical to follow it all the time in the screen application over here. So let's go over to the Pi and I've got this program that I wrote right here. We've got serial and then we're also going to be using Pi NMEA2. Um, found that on GitHub. Fantastic um, Python library for parsing NMEA data. We're also going to be importing time. And I've got um, a lot of variables in here for debugging and error tracking. I'll put this back at zero. But I'll talk about each of these as we go. Now this entire process is very prone to errors, so I've got a lot of try and accept loops. Uh, basically what we want to do here is every minute we're going to be opening that serial port right there. Now for some reason the serial port likes to change names, so we're going to try to open it on uh, ACM0, but if that doesn't work we're going to open it on ACM1. I haven't had any errors outside of that. And then I'm printing the name of the serial port just so I can keep track of which one it's on and whether or not it switches, how often it switches, and whatnot. Then we're going to try to actually read that port. Sometimes that doesn't work. So if we get a uh, Unicode decode error, we're just going to set our uh, text variable here to error. And then we're going to wait 10 seconds. Next, we're just going to close that port because we now have our string of data that we read from the serial port. Now we need to split it out, split out the actual uh, NMEA data that's in the middle of the string that we pulled out of there. So it usually starts with a new line and it usually ends with OK. And then I print each of those variables just so I can see what's going on. Again, that's all for debugging purposes, not necessary. Probably won't be in the code for the, the, final, the, final, uh, the final script. Next, we're going to try to uh, parse it using that uh, pi nmea2. And that doesn't always work because sometimes um, that string of data that we get doesn't include the data that we want or it's incomplete. So if it doesn't work then we'll just set uh, MSG to error. And then I'll print MSG so I can see what's going on. At this point if everything's gone the way it's supposed to we're going to try to actually print out the GPS coordinates. So with the pi nmea2 we can just type msg.latitude msg.longitude minutes and msg.latitude or uh, yeah these are latitudes but you get the point that's all there is to it using that library it's very easy to use and if that doesn't throw any errors if there's 
any errors up to this point, this again will throw an error, and we'll see the accept part in a second. But if that doesn't throw an error, then it's okay to send a text message. So what we'll do is we will open the uh, serial port for the modem, convert altitude into feet, because by default it is in meters. And then here's our script. You saw this last week when we were sending text messages. I just pasted all of that right into here. We set our function, um, we set the storage, and we do need to set the character set. This is where I ran into a lot of problems with this. And then we set the phone number, and then we will actually type the message. Now, this is all very drawn out right here because the other format that I actually used to print it earlier in this script, uh, the, uh, the modem didn't like it. It was just in the wrong format, and I got a lot of errors from everything. It didn't work. So then we will send the message, delete the message, and close the GSM port. Now, if anything goes wrong here and it throws an attribute error, then that's where we start counting errors. I do want to see the number of errors, and if the number of errors actually gets um, over five right here, it will send just the raw data. But then we will also wait two minutes and just let things kind of work their way out. Sometimes it gets to this point, and it'll eventually work itself out. But if everything goes well, it should be sending a text message once every minute. So let's run this and see how well it works. So we can see that it's on ACM0. There it goes. And here we can see the initial text. That's not a complete enemy A sentence. So we ended up getting bad data through some errors. That's OK. We've got lots of error handling code in here. So we'll just wait a minute and let it try again. And we got another error. We'll just let this run for a little bit here and see if we can get a good one. Earlier when I was testing this, I was trying to test the sending raw data section. I was kind of running into some trouble actually getting errors and now I'm recording this for you guys, and I'm getting more errors than I got earlier. It's really just a uh, luck of the draw on the reading the serial port, because it does close itself out and clear the data, so it doesn't always give us what we want. There we go. Now we can see that we've got a complete NMEA sentence. We've got our message. It gives us the uh, latitude and longitude as well as the altitude. At this point it's not converted into meters so or it's not converted into feet. And I just got the text message. So here's how this is going to work. So we've got the text message here with the important data and all I have to do is copy the GPS coordinates and then we'll go over here to Google Maps paste, cut off the altitude, and there it is. You can see that here on my phone, that it's pretty close. You can see the GPS location from the phone, and it's, it's right there. So that's all I've got for today. I hope you enjoyed learning how to parse the NMEA data. And next week, I will be getting into, I think I'm going to talk about the external altimeter that works based on air pressure. And that will also have a temperature sensor, and we'll be, we'll be able to read the actual air pressure data. That'll be outside the payload box, so it'll be interesting to see that data while everything's up in the air, too. So that's all I've got for, for now, and I'll talk to you all next week. Thanks.